Hey, welcome back to Anderson's Garage. I'm Jim. Today we're going to talk about timing chains. What goes wrong with timing chains, what they do, and what you should look out for. So let's tear into this GM 2.4 liter and I'll show you what's going on. If your engine is an orchestra, the timing chain is the conductor. Keeps everything in order working together. Let's go over some of that process. This is the crankshaft. This is your timing chain. It runs around the crankshaft and it runs through these things here called guides. They do exactly what it sounds like. They just keep the chain in place they're usually made out of plastic so that they can wear as the metal chain rides against them. So from the crankshaft, which is here, the timing chain runs up through an opening through the cylinder head and up to the camshafts. This would be the exhaust camshaft and the intake camshaft. Here you can see a better view of the camshafts. So what does a timing chain do? So as we spin the crankshaft, you'll notice up here at the top, these are the camshafts, and they turn via the timing chain. So what happens when it stretches? Well, we could demonstrate that. Let's back out this bottom guide bolt. Okay, so now you're all cha your chain's all stretched out and wonky. Now that's an extreme example of what happens when the chain stretches. The worst possible thing that could happen is the chain actually stretches so far, gets so far out of time that your pistons contact the valves. That'll cause a no run condition. Your car won't, sometimes it'll happen during startup. Sometimes it'll happen while you're driving on the road. Usually there's some warning signs. The DTCs in the engine computer. Uh, you may notice a rattle at startup. So that's what a timing chain does inside the motor. Now let's cover what happens when it stretches so far that you have interference with the piston to valve. So let's go ahead and we'll remove this timing chain. So there's your timing chain. These ones in these GM motors are about the thickness of a bicycle chain, which may be part of the reason why they fail. And the manufacturer is going to use the lightest possible material and chain that they can get away with and still make it out of warranty because any reciprocating weight added inside the engine is going to reduce miles per gallon. We're going to lock this camshaft down. So this would be worst case scenario. Your chain is stretched to a point that the camshafts are allowed to get out of time with the crankshaft. And as you spin the engine over and you have some valves open, the piston contacts the valves. A lot of you would look at the chain, the timing chain, and think, how could that stretch? Well, here's an example. So this is from a GM 3.6 V6. This was neglected for far too long until the motor just wouldn't run anymore. That happens. So here's an example. Both these chains are hanging from the screwdriver. And see the difference in the length? right there your conductor the conductor of your mechanical orchestra this guy when he's been out super late and had way too much to drink and you can't get back on the wagon you wind up with a catastrophic failure so although that doesn't look like much 
when it comes to the timing of your engine, that's a considerable amount. That's why it's so important that we don't let these things go until there's a catastrophic failure, piston to valve clearance issues. There's no cheap way to take care of a timing chain usually. Some vehicles are a lot simpler than others. This motor right here found in Cobalts and Malibus and this motor is pretty simple to do in the car. Somebody with a fair bit of mechanical knowledge can do this motor pretty easy in the car. If you run into a situation where you've let it go so long and you damage the motor, you're so much further in. So if a shop tells you that you have timing chain issues, it's always better to address it before you get to the point of catastrophic failure. At that point, you may need a new engine. I'm also gonna take you over here and show you what happens at that point. So behind me is a 2009 Buick Enclave that had a 3.6 GM V6 with a bad timing chain. They were told not to drive it, don't drive it, don't drive it until we can get it fixed, get it replaced. It kept going and eventually it wouldn't run anymore. So now the head's got to be sent out to the machine shop just like I talked about. That's going to be expensive. A used motor for this thing without a new timing chain is like $2,500 just for the motor. Then you got to figure labor to install it. This service would have been a lot cheaper if it would have been addressed right away. Now this didn't have a timing chain noise at cold start. What it did have was those diagnostic trouble codes we talked about for the camshaft and crankshaft correlation. It was, out, it was beginning to get out of time and it got so far out of time that it would no longer run. And for anybody watching, you can take one of these out the front. It's actually not bad. Then you don't have to mess with the steering rack. You don't have to worry about an alignment or anything afterwards. It's not a bad job. So that's a pretty basic overview of what a time chain does and why it's important to address concerns and issues that come up before it's too late. And remember, the cheapest car you'll ever own is the one you already have. So to think, hey, I'm just going to drive it until it pukes and then buy something else. The chances of you buying something else that has an issue like this with the timing chain, see that stretch? It's pretty good. So let's say you just, this is in your cobalt and you're just going to run it because it's just a Chevy Cobalt. I'll just run it and the timing chain is going to crap the bed and then I'm going to buy a Malibu or something. Guess what? It's the same motor. It's going to have the same timing chain issues. Just address it. I know it's expensive. Typically, especially on a, a V6 engine, it's going to be a lot more expensive than something like this. I don't know much about like as far as how much it is for like a Nissan or a Subaru or something. This isn't something that's going to go away on its own. It's not going to fix itself. Once that chain is stretched, it's just going to keep stretching. That this bicycle chain, that's what's keeping your motor in time. So the only good way to avoid this issue is to just have it done. If you start to not notice that rattle on cold startup or you've got a check engine light and somebody scans it and they say, it's crankshaft and camshaft correlation. And they tell you, hey, your timing chain is probably going bad. It's, it's better to address it. I know that it's expensive. I understand that. It's, not, it's usually never a cheap service. Thank you for watching.